according to background, according to complexion, according to nationality. No. And I can count another one whom I had to be quiet and not tell the story. It was difficult for him. After God showed him, revealed me to him. He speaks the truth about me. But after that, he develops anger from nowhere. And you could see. But he already said it. I took the truth. For the truth shall set you free. And you will be free indeed. I took the truth. I want to show you how God taught me these things so that you can understand. And that's why you see me. Whatever I have, I have my desire is to see people doing it. Now, repeat verse... Okay, take... Uh, I wanted verse 13, but take from verse uh, 11. As they continued along and talked, behold... A chariot of fire with horses of fire. Remember where we come from, from verse 4, ne? verse 3, verse 4. It means Elijah kept on saying to Elijah, Elisha Elijah. As surely as your soul lives and the Lord lives, I will never leave you. The sons of the prophets have already told Elisha, do you know that the master, your master, is go, the, the Lord is going to take your master away from you. Elisha says, I know, but be quiet about it. I'm going to follow him, don't worry. I'm going to follow him. The reason why one wants to give whatever that God gives, you won't want any son to always follow you. You want to see yourself wherever they are. And Jesus says, wait for the Holy Spirit. And this is what you will do. You see, when you give the mental, you know the whole future of Elijah. You know what Elijah will do. That will give you peace. That will give you peace. So tell me if Elijah was going peacefully. He left while still begging Elijah to stay and not to follow him. Read. As they continued along and talked, behold, a chariot of fire with horses of fire appeared suddenly and separated the two of them. Separated the two of them? Uh-huh. And Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Elisha saw Elijah it. went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Whirlwind doesn't want it. anointing. Doesn't want, uh, doesn't want the mental. It wants you because the main thing is to take you to heaven. Why you will not be fruitful? What makes it fruitful? You leave it here. Lo, I will go to heaven. And when I go, I will not leave you alone. I will leave you with the Holy Spirit. I will leave you with the mental. Let's go. Elisha saw it and cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and his horsemen. Uh Uh-huh. And he no longer saw Elijah. He no longer saw who? So if you don't see me, you'll get it. But if you see me, you won't get it. You must go back and read what Elijah said to Elijah. If you see me, you won't get it. But if you don't see me, you will get it. Let's go. Then he took hold of his own clothes and tore them into two pieces yes. in grief. Uh-huh. In grief, uh-huh. He, 
He picked up the mantle of Elijah that fell of him. It fell. Remember the mantle fell. It was not given by Elijah. It fell. It fell. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that fell fell of him uh-huh. and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. He took it. Isaiah. And he stood by the bank of Jordan. I am a falusing lamb by Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that fell of him and struck the waters and said, "Where is the Lord?" the god of elijah what is the lord the god of morena modimo wa ga eliya o kai elijah are morena what is he are o kai he's here ufa in the middle mokubo that's what you're going to be left with jise o yang go sala ka so the holy spirit moya o bise takes what is from jesus o tsa se se mo go jesus and gives to us wa se re naya and disclose to us yani wa se re senule let's go And when he too had struck the waters they divided this Why way does it say and that when he to when he took uh uh-huh. read read repeat and when he too had struck the waters when he too when he yeah too when he too when he Two. If we say when you two it means there was someone before. If when I say and you two it means there was someone before. Now and when he two. So how will Elijah open and make miracles without that? How will he take Elijah's place without that? He has to be fruitful. On earth. When he two did that. What happened? Uh-huh. The waters they divided this way and that. The waters divided this way and that. Uh-huh. And Elisha crossed over. And uh, Elijah crossed over. Me Elisha at sea. So it means he was going to be trapped if the mantle was not with him. And if he opened the the water to cross How did he pass there when he was with Elijah? Now he has to go back. <laughs> Now he has to go back. Would he go back without the mantle of Elijah? Where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? And the Lord, the God of Elijah, now revealed himself. The water has opened. And the sons of the prophet, they always knew. Uh-huh. Let's go. So, the waters have been purified. So, the waters have been purified to this day. The water has been purified. Listen to them. The, the water didn't just open. The water is pure. Purified even today. Go there and drink that water. Know that you drink from the anointing of the Lord, the God of the Lord. The water is purified even today. So now you're carrying the anointing that will even in the future people make a good reference. <laughs> they will make a good reference But I will be that it does not cause the weight to fall to the ground. I never I never le fuku le wela mo mmu. Do we love Jesus Christ? Amen. Let's go. So the waters have been purified to this day. To this day, ah? Uh, in, in accordance with the word spoken by Elisha. Let's love for Jesus Christ. The word did not fall to the ground. So that anointing helps the reference to be correct. According to the word of Elijah. Elisha. You are not to make wrong references. Going and be ready to anoint people because of their appearances. Their stature. Their background. Their nationality. or because of what they have
Is somebody learning something today? Amen. Samuel suffered. Samuel no nana le botata. This issue. A karata ka bone botata. You want to anoint the wrong people. Una batla go tlotsa batho ba isimbo. Elisha didn't even want to. Elisha ene na sa ba. Did you see Elisha? O bone Elisha ya. Elisha ya. What kind of a boy is this? God said he will take your place. I didn't want to give him what will make him fruitful. That's why I'm saying he too. It means there was someone before and that someone was Elijah. Go on. Verse 23. Then Elisha went up from Jericho to Bethel. On the way, young boys came out of the city and mocked him and said to him, You must get it, ne? I want us to get this. The sons of the prophet knew. May the Lord give you this. His eyes to see. I want you to remember what the sons of the prophet the sons of the prophet the Lord the spirit of the Lord the God of Elijah is upon Elijah so even in when Elijah was gone God never stopped his mission on earth Even when someone can go, God still moves on earth. Now you love me now. Jesus says, in my name you will cast out demons, you will trample over scorpions, you give them authority. So Jesus did not withhold it. Jesus never said to them wait here I'm going to do my job. Please wait. When Jesus said it is finished. He knew he will come. Wait in Jerusalem. For the mantle. For the Holy Spirit. And this is what you will do. And that's how people will know. That I'm with you. So Samuel, Samuel made a big mistake by looking at the appearance. Because in his mind was who? Saul. Saul. So he expected someone who looks like Saul to carry on being a king. So God knew that Samuel kept the reference of 1 Samuel chapter 9 verse 2. Because Samuel chapter 9 verse 2 explains how Saul was tall Handsome. His appearance was good. So it means David was not even close to the beauty of Saul. Because there was no one like Saul in Israel. And David was from Israel. I want you to understand the beauty that attracts David attracted everything wonderful than Saul who was nicer than any man. If you are fearfully and wonderfully made, listen, when someone turns and says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, those words are for everyone. If you can know what is within you, you will draw everything good. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And goodness and mercy never followed Saul. So Samuel suffered with that. Be careful of references. Check whether you speak as the devil. 
Level la gore ga o ya ka satan ka ba ya ka modim So don't forget it says the mental fell ko in ya And every son of the prophet could see who revealed to them that Elijah the great prophet was going It means they had communication with God It means they had so to a point that they come to Elijah and ask him do you know Elijah says I know don't talk about it Elijah says didi malang lona I already saw the problem here I already know that there's a problem here. Because if somebody says please stay here. No, be quiet. I already know. I'll just follow him. I'll just follow him. I already know. Elijah didn't say uh, I know that you're dying. Elisha ga 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 itse go rwena wa. I want to see your spirit coming out of your body. Ah, ga ke ke batla go bona mo wa ga go tswa mo mo. Don't tell him. Eh. Mo tlogele se ke ba mo. He wants to go with the man. O batla go tsa maaka ko. But it's impossible. Me ga go khona ga. The mental is not for heaven. Ku bo ga se a le go di. The mental is for everybody on earth. Ya ba to bo. Because Jesus says I'm anointed to heal the sick to cast out demons. You can't cast out demons in heaven. You can't trample over scorpions in heaven. Who's captive? Who's bound in heaven? In heaven people are free. What are you going to do with the mental there? And when I spoke, some people heard the good and said, no, he's angry. Said, no, 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 God revealed. Yeah, yeah. And I had to apply wisdom. I had to apply what? Wisdom. That's why Elijah said, no, 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 don't talk about it. Be quiet. Be quiet. May the Lord open your spiritual ears and your spiritual eyes to know what is from within a man. So if God says Elijah will take a place, God is destined for Elijah to have what is in you. And that's why when Moses lost it. When Moses lost it. What's the stage here? Look at Canaan. Now you're not going there. I'll read somebody else. To take your place. Joshua 1, God speaks to, Moses, to Joshua. God speaks to Joshua. Says Moses, my servant is dead. You are to take his place. Place. Now this is what is happening. To make good references. The word is in your mouth. Meditate upon it day and night. Put it into practice. And you will be prosperous in every way. Even when it happened me saying to you Joshua go and anoint somebody next to you. You meditated upon the word the word will not fall to the ground. You put it into practice because it's into practice you will never look at stature appearance or how a man looks or his height. Because you put it into Practice. And that's how a lot of people live. You look at somebody who's like is very active and say, This one is active, he can be one of the people on the pulpit. No. From the unexpected, God can raise something. From the unexpected. So it was unexpected for David to be a king. It was unexpected for David to become a king. 
It is unexpected for you in your family to be who you are today. It is unexpected for you to be Lesero, to be Daniel, to be whoever. It is unexpected. But God chose because he left stature. He left appearance. He left appearance. He left stature. That's why many never thought they would be what they are today. Because we are living in So God had to make me away. Walk with confidence. When God makes you away. Walk with confidence when God makes you away. So we need to know and understand this matter. It's not a laughing matter. It's in the nature of many people to suffer with what I'm teaching today. And that's why some, even when they left, God had to make a plan to raise somebody himself. This is the story of Moses and Joshua. God himself had to come to Joshua. Moses has never laid a hand on somebody to receive. Moses has never done that. He has never done that. It is God who came to Joshua and said, Moses, my servant is there. Come take his place. God told Elijah that Elijah. go, you'll find Elijah. Elijah, go look for Elijah and he's going to take your place. God had to tell Samuel I found myself a king. Go to the house of Jesse. And I myself will show you what to do. You don't just go and look at appearance stature and how handsome the firstborn is looking like Saul. And say, surely the Lord's anointed stands before me. You must hear what he says. Surely the Lord's anointed. It means God has done it. This person is chosen. A chosen person is the one whom God chose before they could be formed in the mother's womb. Because he's anointed. You just go with the horn. And you need to understand the issue of the horn. If an animal is small and the horn starts to grow, there's no horn without oil inside. And the more the horn grows, the more the oil inside the horn. David says, thou has exalted my head as that of a buffalo. Meaning it grew. The, the horn grew and it became strong. Listen, when he tried to attack a buffalo, never make a mistake of the buffalo looking at you like this. And when we go to hunt, never make a mistake of shooting a buffalo on the horn. It will never go in. That thing is strong. You are in trouble. You are going to die. That thing will hit you. Never make a mistake. One, two, three, four lions cannot pull a buffalo down. It has to be more than five. So if thou exalted my head, as long as lions can come, they shouldn't make one mistake. One mistake. The head must not be up. They must hold the buffalo on the nose and the throat so they must not breathe. But once the head is up, once they pull it down, the buffalo will stay. Thou exalted my head. My head. You have exalted my head as that of a buffalo. And when it when it looks at the lion, the lion will float. No, I was going there. Look, I was going there. That oil is in the horn. The oil in a small horn. The horn still has to grow. Seven horns. 
seven eyes, sevenfold, Holy Spirit of God. Once you develop yourself with the word, seven horns, anybody comes to the time saying God is raising a generation today. A generation which is everywhere, every house, every department, every now, whoever tries to do whatever, holds. The moment they look, they look into your office. They look into your house. They look everywhere. How has exalted my head as that of a buffalo? It's all about the horns, the strength. Because oil is in the horns. That's why we anoint your head with oil. And you must understand the horns. When the horns are broken, it means part of sacrifice. Because the more you go through tests and trials, the more you go through persecution, the more the horn the more the horn becomes bigger the more the horn becomes bigger and when the horn becomes the more the oil inside and the more the light the more the light because more oil needs the horn to be bigger the more the oil needs more accommodation meaning the accommodation is smaller so the horn must grow. The horn must be bigger. That's why David gives an example with the horn of a buffalo. Because the horn of a buffalo, there's no separation. The two are one. The two are one. They connect. They never separate. That's why when it looks at the lion, the lion will not see two horns. Because it's one horn. They connect. So if one gives you something, like the apostle Paul, do not faint to forget to faint to flame. The gift which you have received through the laying out of mine. Faint it to flame. Let it grow. Fill it. Let So never suffer with wrong references. Never suffer with wrong references. Live to see the horn growth. David says my horns. The horn is made strong. So there's no oil in one horn, oil in this horn. No. When you look in the middle, the forehead of the buffalo, the horns join together. And we try to shoot the, never make a mistake when you shoot the buffalo. You're dead. When you shoot a buffalo, we target here. Or we target here. If we target here, we know we're going to get the heart. If we target here, we know we're going to get here is the heart or the lungs. Here you are sure of the lungs. But going to the head, we don't want to make a mistake. Because you might say you're doing it here. The moment it moves, you get it here. <laughs> it wants to see where the bullet comes from. And when it comes, I've never been afraid when we were in Kasani. At night, when you go home, we saw a lot of big eyes. When you drive closer, it was buffaloes in the world. Yes, they say it's a city, but elements are elephants are roaming around the city. Buffaloes at night. There's no house with the gate. Because if you've got a nice tree, nice flowers, the elephant just breaks the gate and comes into your yard and eats. So there's no, it's useless to make a gate in your house. So at night, the buffaloes are coming, roaming around the city. That's why I wish to live, not here, man. We are afraid of robbers. There, we are afraid of animals. Batswana bagaibona. Bagaibona. Batswana. Lona le tswa bo ha bo rone le bo. 
Ali hizi ni kasadi. Ali hizi o kavango mani. Ali hizi ba kaba fiti. Ali hizi o kavango. O la hizi le hizi tuko skolo ne? Eh? But did you travel there? Did you travel there? Because when you go there from Havoroni, going up there, oh, you must be careful of animals. When you go up from Havoroni, you must be careful of animals. You get it? Amen. You get it? Amen. So, after the crusading Kasani, when you go home, and those things, the moment they do this, all of them, they, you know what the Buffalo's do at night? If the lion chases them during the day, and they realize that they can't go anywhere, they stay one place together. Night vision is not that clear. And the night vision of Lions is more clearer than of buffaloes. Those buffaloes cannot see the lions clearer than the lions. But they can always smell the lion. And when the smell comes from the face there, and a lion will be there trying to attack, but buffalo will always come because he feels the smell. And when it comes, the lion shem sees the horns. That's how. So in the horn, that's why Samuel took a horn to go and anoint who? Now, the more the oil, the horn must grow bigger. The men of Judah, after that, David was not anointed once. The men of Judah went to anoint David. So it means David was growing. And after the men of Judah, 12 kings of Israel when to anoint David. So David is thou has anointed my head as that of a buffalo. We'll teach about it Sunday or tomorrow. You'll get it. So that you can understand the strength that God speaks about. And God is raising such a generation today with such No matter what they plan against you, no matter how they criticize you, no matter how they plot against you, no matter how they say we need to plan to remove him, thou has anointed my head as that of a buffalo. You speak about them. Fire comes off the mouth. It goes to the houses. It goes to the departments. It goes to their manhood. It goes to their loins. That's why they became barren. When they touched Abraham. That's why God says, touch not my anointed death. Touch not. You need to understand where it comes from. Because the horn has got enough oil and it has grown. It has grown. And these are called witnesses. You speak about them, fire comes out of their mouth. You speak about them, you don't speak, even though they don't hear you. They are somewhere where they are sleeping, whatever. You talk about them, you do whatever. It's active. What is in them? It's active. It's not an ordinary mental. It's active. It's at work even though they are sleeping. It's at work. It's at work. It does the work. It's at work. It attacks. It gets work. It takes over. It's at work. It takes over. When it's at work, no one can change it. It's thoughts. Maybe it has got its own thinking. That's why it calls seven horns, seven eyes, sent out throughout the whole world. So wherever people are talking or planning or plotting, it's already sent out throughout the whole world. It says seven horns, seven eyes. Seven is a number of perfection. Seven means the horn has grown to its fullest Stature. So raised my head as that of a buffalo. Who can pull you down? Because they always want to pull you down. Now the Bible says, 
So you, God raises you. They want to pull you down. God raises you. They want to pull you down. The main aim is to make you fall. And the main aim that's why in their mouth is left or in their mouth there's only one language. Oh, he doesn't open the church. No, no, no. He has fallen. He has fallen. He has fallen. He will never reopen because the church. Because that's what you have been wishing. Not knowing that the horn will even come bigger than the wheel. Not knowing that the horn Because oil is in there and the horn grows. The horn is there. Now, this is the sun. So, if there's a horn there, don't think the horn will be small and it becomes a boy forever. As it grows, the horn grows. And when the horn grows, the horn cannot remain with the same oil. It grows, then the oil, oil becomes more in the horn. So Samuel says, surely Samuel, the Lord's anointed Amaruri. stands before me. He must get the statement. He has not yet anointed David. He still got the, oil, the horn with oil. But he says, the Lord's anointed. It means God has already chosen. David was not called. He was chosen. Because he was anointed already. The Lord's anointed. God God said to Jeremiah, I have separated you and set you apart before you were formed in your mother's womb. I made you holy. So he was anointed already. That's how some of us were born. Prophetically so. People had to speak before we could come on earth. Some people had to die when we were born because they already spoke about us. After speaking about me, the person had to die. Say now, I can go to heaven. Now I can go. Because where's the message? What is the message? Go check if Daniel is born. His name shall be Daniel. When they come back, he's born. After they get the message, he goes. He passes on. And that's why when one holds on the word that God spoke, you're not fearing anyone. You're not fear anyone. Whoever says you're not from God, whoever says you're a satanist, whoever says you're a demon, uh -uh. Uh -uh. you are here and you want to give properly what you have and divide it amongst others. You give it to others. You don't want people to follow you and say, wait, please wait, please wait. No. You don't want it to fall on them. You want to give it to them. You don't want it to fall from you. He says the mantle fell from Elijah. The Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2 didn't fall. Because Jesus, Jesus properly spoke. Jesus properly revealed to the disciples. I'm leaving you with the Holy Spirit. But Elijah couldn't say to Elijah, I'm leaving you with my mantle. He wanted to go. Be careful of making references in the wrong way. Oh, I, that one is not better than my father. You fell before you can even rise. You fell before you can even rise. That's not what I teach. What I teach is to give everybody and all of you must go and function according to God's will. Because a lot of people suffer with that. And I want people to follow me and speak that way. There were prophets before me. There were apostles before me. Evangelists before me. And God also blessed them. So I also focus on those who held on what is good. 
And that's why I need you to understand this revelation. The sons of the prophets knew. That's why they told Elijah. To you know that the Lord, the God, God is going to take your master from you today. Elijah says, I know. Don't play with people who know when there's death of a leader. It means they understand the reason of them living. They understand because the Lord your God is going to take your master. Why is he taking? They know why. When young ones rise, they pull them down. When Jezebel rises, they are afraid to confront Jezebel. And that's what God says to Elijah, go back. Why do you run away? After killing so many false prophets, you are afraid of Jezebel. God says, go back. Elijah didn't go back. God said, okay, go. You will meet with Elijah. He will take your place. So that's why I'm saying God is raising the generation. You must get it. Well, when they speak, or even when they don't speak, anybody who speaks wrong or does what is wrong against them, what is in them is always active. And you must get why. Jesus says you can do anything to me but if you sin against the Holy Spirit you will never be forgiven. Meaning it's so active. You, you lie wherever okay. against the Holy Spirit. You, no matter how far are you on a pulpit you begin to talk about that Holy Spirit. You sin against the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Look how they became barren in the house of the king, including his workers, because of touching Abraham. Abraham. And God said straight to the king, you are dead. You are dead. Happy spiritual birthday. And happy anniversary. Time will tell. Time will tell. Time will tell. If you want to leave How about and tell? people sing, but let time tell while you are around. If he can. And that's why I'm saying you need to know and understand these mysteries. When Elijah comes to me today, or when Moses comes to me today, they will not be the same ones like before they left this part of the earth. They are so different. And that's why I'll speak about the man of God going. But after he left, he comes with bags of gifts to him. I'll open the bags. What's happening? And you walk with me from the top of the mountain going to the main road. You walk with me but looking under the sea. Show me mysteries. And that's why I Showing me mysteries that he has never even showed to others. That he has never even shown to others. He said, look under the sea, what's happening? Look at this These are mysteries. It's not easy for people to get this. I remember one day in my hand, one of the mysteries right in my hand, go show me, look what they were doing. Between them, but look in your hand. And I saw 
One small mystery, as small as mustard seed. Ya bona masa ya katega amanyani ya ka pewu ya mustard. Time will tell. Na ko yetu. So we need to know how to embrace what Jesus has given us. It's not for a particular church like Rabboni. It's for the body of Christ. It's for, if we can know, it's for the body of Christ. It's not for certain bodies. It's for the body of Christ. It's for everyone to partake and be blessed in such so if we know this mystery we will survive and stop making funny references beware of making a bad reference because Satan also made references while speaking to Jesus. He also said it is written in Psalms 91. And Jesus said it is written in Deuteronomy 8. Jesus said it is written. But Jesus made the correct reference. It never fell to the ground. With the devil, it fell to the ground. And with Samuel, whom the word says, not even one of his words will fall to the ground, the word fell to the ground because of making reference based on stature, based on appearance, based on height. I don't care how you look like. I don't care about your background. I don't care how you're dressed. I always pray, God, let me see what is inside of them. What is inside of them. So that God can push you further. He says, thou has anointed my head with oil. You must understand that that cup is a horn. He calls the horn a cup. That's why he says, my cup runs over. It's a horn. We must understand that mystery. That cup, it means a horn. That cup is full of oil. That's why my cup runs over. So it's from here. Meaning it's broken. When you are persecuted in everything, broken. And it's full of oil, it's running over. That's why you need to understand this mystery. It's not always like First Samuel chapter nine, where you know chapter nine, you read chapter nine, and you read chapter ten again, where Samuel takes a flask. The Samuel of a cup. It's flask. And the type of a flask. Which anointed David? That type was a horn. So a mantle is not for heaven, people. It's to function here. That's why it had to fall. Remember, don't forget the mantle fell. Elijah didn't give it. And he wanted to go and leave Elijah behind. He begged him time and again to please stay. If it was given and it was correct, Elijah was supposed to say, okay, stay, take. And Elijah wouldn't follow him because he understood that he has to get that. And that's why when it fell, Elijah took the mantle and hid the water. Where is the Lord? 
are morena mudimu of elijah wa ga elia and the god of elijah appeared and parted the water me mudimu wa ga elia a tlagela and elisha me elisha and the sons of the prophets said the spirit of the lord moya wa morena the god of elijah mudimu wa ga elia rest on elisha o mogo elisha the holy spirit moya wa who is in me o must be upon you appreciate his uniqueness in everyone itumelle o lemoge ka mo aleng ka seng everyone ka mo a farlo ka ne ka te mo go botla and i'm speaking to the body of christ ya ni bua ka mmele wa ga christ ke ra i'm teaching this it's painful to lose important people before time go la tlhagela ke batho ba botlhokwa pele ga lako we rely on them ri ka e gile mo go botla they taught us great things ba rutile dilo tse di kgolotso they taught us what is wonderful rutile and it's always painful to this great men of god mo ba ntlangeng ba ba living this side of the earth go swa before time pele ga lako the other one i didn't talk about it but god showed me that offense yo mo ga ka bua le ka ene he showed me the other one again mo di mampa ntsori ke se go together ga bane ba le mmo those ones i didn't teach about them those ones na ga ke skirt i only taught about offense ki bua le fela ka the message of offense god showed me too ka mo laetse ba se go they all died The other one, I saw them together. But the other one, I didn't know. I knew after two, three years. I was told that his dad said, "Ah, then God took me back, friends. Remember, me, they don't know each other. They never met. But the time God showed me, they were together. And the way they were speaking, God said, 'Look how offended they are. They That's so I'm trying to help you. It's easy when you see that the man of God is living. The sons of the prophet, all of them, they knew. And Elijah was a great man. And they'll tell Elijah, "Do you know that the Lord is going to take your master away from you?" And it was easy. Even Elijah already knew. Elisha na sa sait. Be quiet about it. So guys, we know. Let's be quiet. because we can't do anything the lord is taking him he's not going to hell he's going to heaven let's not touch in romena it's easy and that's why we need intimacy with god and now you first begin to pray for them you pray for them you pray for them you pray for them And one of them God showed me and said, "You know what? Now don't be in contact. Len. Take what is good from his mouth." But you see what I've shown you in the vision of faith. Now take notes out right. Or take notes. Right. just taking what is good you know when a man is going and the other one is just in the circle of danger at the moment omungene ke mathata fela mo dikaganye but he's just in the circle of danger me ana ene o dikaganye ditswe ke prophet ke mo prophet wa itse He's just in a circle of danger. O dikaganye ditswe ke kotsi. Fela. And that's danger of being attacked not just living but being attacked. Ke kotsi ya go tlhasela. E seng go tswa fela. Ke group. Ke ba se tlhopa se setseng group. Ha ke bua ka se tlhopa. I'm talking about Christians. Ha ke bua ka ba Christ. Ke bua ka se tlhotswana se sengwe. I'm not talking about Christians. Ha ke bua ka ba Christ. I'm talking about another type of belief. Or religion. Or religion. But we pray. Let it not happen, Lord. Have mercy. It's painful when you know. That's why I'm referring you, all of you, look at the sons of the prophet. It means they had intimacy with God. If the Lord God is taking your master from you, they had masters as well. Who was mentoring them? 
Because they said your master they didn't say our master. And Elijah was the great prophet of the time. But they referred to him as Elisha's master. They didn't say our master. May the Lord bless you in this training of the matters of the kingdom. Put the references aside and hear from God to speak with God's reference. God knew why Samuel went to the firstborn of Jesse. Because he was tall like His appearance like Saul. There was no one who was handsome like Saul in Israel. And David was from Israel. It means Saul was even more handsome than David. You see, there's a difference between being attractive. You can be handsome, you can be beautiful, but nothing going right with you. You attract nothing good. And that's how God operates. That's how God makes his glory shine upon a person. When the glory of the Lord shines upon a person, attract everything good. That's how God sees you. Everything good comes from you, Father of life. Everything good Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. David said so. You see, there are some people, no matter how handsome they can be or beautiful, but when they speak, ah, uh, There are ladies who are beautiful. But everybody are crack. Next When they just open their mouth to speak. Lord have mercy. In other words. Come on, Jama. If you're fearfully and wonderful made. How do you look up for you for in Jam? You see, you have been made. You are not created. If you are made, how dare you? Ah, ah, ah. What I never forget me. He will. T- Abigail will tell you. She will tell you. Hore, uskebe wan tebara. Don't forget me. Uskebe wan tebara. Because you attract everything good. What is not good cannot stay with you. And that's David. Yo, get a feet. That's David. Yo, get a feet. And that's how David was blessed. God is here to bless all of you. And uh, when we refer to Jesus, what do we say? Jesus, son of? Jesus, son of? Did the Bible say Jesus was the most handsome among people in Israel? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You just look at the movies. You watch the movies. It never said so. But when it comes in, the holiness, the presence, the holiness, the presence, the power, the glory, then it goes on. Jesus grew in stature and in wisdom. He grew in now it the whole. He grew in stature and in wisdom. That's what it says. And when he talks about David, God says, 
I do not look from the outside. As he God says come. to some, do not look at stature or the appearance of man. But when he explains about soul, he says he was handsome. And high in stature. In God, there's no handsome, there's beauty. So I'll tell you, Jesus was beautiful. Jesus was beautiful. Jesus was beautiful and he's still beautiful. With, with Jesus, we don't put handsome. And that's why it never said he was handsome. No, no, it never put that. Never. never. Only with Saul. And with David, it didn't have to put handsome. It's beauty. Today, let's flow with the beauty. Let's flow with the beauty. Let's flow with what? With the beauty. Let's go with what? With the? With the beauty. If I say one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. What are we saying? What are we saying? If I say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. if I say you guys are blessed, Hunger you must believe. Le, le du mel if I say five, six, seven, blah, 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 you are blessed, believe. Hunger if, le I say, if I say the whole le church, Hunger le church. Hunger huh? Yes, if I say the whole church now, believe. Huh? If I say the whole church now, believe. because this is given unto you. I don't want to speak words that fall to the ground. You get it? There are people, even when you speak to them, okay, you have a, you have a job, you'll achieve this. Okay. You have a job. Get this, you'll achieve this. Now get a car, get this, you get a car, go on, move on, get it, get a car, get a car. No, I can't afford, okay, take petrol money, take this, do this, do this, do this, don't worry, so I'm setting you free with what I'm giving you. So in other words, if I say, don't listen to anybody, you are going to corrupt the good work that the Lord has begun. You are going to corrupt it. You get it? You are going to lose your job. If you lost your job when it started like that, who spoke to you? Who came to you with wrong reference? Who came to you with wrong reference? May the Holy Spirit rest on all of you. May the Holy Spirit rest on all of you. I declare the life, the light, the life of God upon all of you. I declare the spirit that raises the standard. Yes, Lord. If you see me different, you're getting it. You're getting it. If you see me common, you lose it. Because many lose spiritual eyes. Because if I see you unique, I see from within. Because if I see you common, I've lost my spiritual eyes. I've lost my spiritual hearing when God told me about you. When I say the Holy Spirit is touching you from your legs, believe, don't interpret as the Holy Spirit. Can the Holy Spirit come from the ground? No, you are sitting on holy ground now. Don't you know even lightning comes from above? It can travel even under. It can hit here. 
and travel underground and hit somebody in Roslyn. Or you hit here, travel underground and hit somebody in Limpopo or in Johannesburg or in Roslyn because he's been traveling underground. So somebody is watching me right now. Somebody gets what I'm talking about now. But they are not here. They are not here. Physically, they're not here. But spiritually, they're receiving it. So if you are called and chosen, get what is happening now. Know and understand spiritual mountain full of grace. Spiritual mountain full of grace. I saw people who are like not even deserving to be there. But God showed me how I rested on the mountain. Right on top of the mountain resting. And people who did not deserve according to men's eyes were there with me. People undermined. People who are raw, fresh. But God showed me because of their faithfulness and saving they go with you right up the mountain. They remain with you right up there the mountain full of grace. And that's why I'm saying God is raising such a generation. Because I've seen such people being trapped by even their friends who are bred but separating. God separating bad friends from them. People whom they trusted. God removing even people they trusted. God say, see, I'm separating them. Because this one deserves to be on top of the mountain. So know when God has separated you. When God has set you apart. You are identified. And for you to be identified, it would take one to walk by the Spirit of God to know you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 